This is going to be a brief video where I'm going to address two issues that I've seen come up, uh, questions and through emails and so on and so forth. The first issue is this. As you can see, you can see a colon and then the word picture and then another colon and then this square underneath it, which represents the picture. We can assume that's what it represents because unfortunately, that's what we're doing by putting this colon after the word picture. This is not correct. And I've seen this in other scenarios having to do with names as well and things like that. If you put a colon before or after any word in correct sentence structure, that would represent a position lodial phrase, depending upon where it is with regards to the verb, it's either going to be for the, of the, with the, or by the. And that depends on a strict adherence to the sequencing of the positionals before and after the verb. So in this case, this is like saying for the picture of the and then you don't know what, what's coming after it. There's no sentence, there's no word, there's just this. So this is incorrect. This is, there's no closure as to what's going on. We assume that this is what's going on, that it's referring to this picture, but it's not a word and it's not a fact, as in it's not a seven. So this is not correct sentence structure. The correct way to do it would be to put a period after the word picture. Then you have your picture, and it is what it is. Sort of like at the bottom here where you see the word, the colon, and then the word autograph, and then a colon, and then a space, and then the word Jason, and then a period. I'm putting a full stop to that. There's no colon after the word Jason. The next issue is the issue of numbers. Now, I've heard people say that numbers are not syntax. So when you're syntaxing a fiction document, that in this scenario, the two would not be syntaxed. Well, if that's the case, then if you're using numbers in correct sentence structure, would they be syntaxed then? What are they? What is the closure on that? Where is the one word, one meaning on that? Because when you use a verb, a two in correct sentence structure, it holds the same value, the same function when you move it over to the fiction. The same thing with the conjunction and the way it operates. It holds the same meaning, one word, one meaning, one function. So what about numbers? Numbers would need to be syntaxed. They are obviously fact-based. So in this scenario, let me syntax it real quick. So that's the syntax scenario. You have the as an adverb, non-tangible adverb, modifying the adjective tangible contract word number, which is coloring the tangible contract number two into an adjective, which is coloring the non-tangible contract word is into a pronoun. And Nothing can follow a pronoun except for breaking the continuance of the evidence for an adverb. So A is an adverb. In fact, is a dangling participle verb. And a dangling participle verb is any verb that is the last word in a word group before breaking the continuance of the evidence. Because it's just dangling there. Verbs are thinking, and in this scenario, there is nothing left to think about. And that's the closure on that. That is why numbers, everything in quantum grammar is assigned a value. That is what quantum grammar is. Quantum is a quantity. So therefore, everything must have a value. And as bankers, as bank bankers, we assign those values with the limits of our knowledge and skill 
And that is what I'm showing you here as to why numbers would have to be syntax. They would also need be positioned because if a number is a fact, the facts must be positioned. There's no assuming what a fact is. If we've taken the assumption out of everything in quantum grammar, why would there be an exception for a number? Therefore, numbers would need positioned. So I hope this helps out there with the closures. And I'm open to anybody else who has any other closures that they'd like to share with me, whether it's via video closure, whether it's via a consultation or a conference closure. You can reach me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching.